fast forward to this year's budget, and in this year's budget we're proposing over $200 million in tax increases, some of which we've already implemented prior to the budget, two of which I signed last week. And we're continuing to improve the business climate. We're improving the regulatory climate in New Jersey. If you don't think who you elect as governor makes a difference, in the first year I'm, I was governor in New Jersey, we reduced the number of regulations over the last year of the Corzine administration by one-third in one year. I mean, we are not going to allow regulations as the hidden tax in the state of New Jersey, which is exactly what it is, continue to drive business out and prevent other businesses from coming in. So we've reduced regulation as well. We've also very aggressively, as Deb mentioned, opened up new places to recruit business around the world. We started with Shanghai and the United Kingdom, and we'll be opening up more foreign offices as we move forward as a way to continue to try to increase trade and increase job possibilities for the state of New Jersey. We've also aggressively recruited other businesses from across America to come to New Jersey. And businesses as diverse as Honeywell and BASF and Bayer have decided to maintain or move their North American headquarters to New Jersey in the last 16 months. We believe it's because we have come forward and acknowledged that our past practices were discriminatory to business and that we're changing them. And they're betting on our future. They're betting on the fact that a governor who's been willing to do the things that I've been willing to do so far will continue to stand in the door of higher taxes and more regulation and more spending and more debt. And since we're on the subject of debt, New Jersey has a public pension system that is in disarray. $54 billion in debt as we speak today. That's with a B. $54 billion in debt. Our public employee health system is $67 billion in debt. These are all based upon practices where promises were made to union members across the state of New Jersey which now cannot be paid for. And so we are in the midst right now of a great debate over the next 50 days in the state legislature as to whether we will curb the excesses of the past. If we do, we have a clear pathway to fiscal solvency through shared sacrifice with those who are receiving these benefits and will continue after the reforms that I've proposed are adopted to receive benefits. But if we don't, the ramifications of that are an independent study has shown that New Jersey's pension system could be broke by the year 2020. And that's nine years from now. And so we need to take action urgently. The House is on fire, so to speak. And this House is on fire in states all across America and in the federal government as well. I gave a speech in Washington, D.C. a month or so ago at the American Enterprise Institute where I said that unfortunately I've been disappointed in President Obama's approach to the looming fiscal crisis that America is experiencing. He gave his State of the Union address at a moment when I thought in the aftermath of the Bowles Simpson report where he could really address in a really strong way as a leader the looming fiscal crisis and to show that he was willing to push his political chips to the center of the table to solve that problem. He drew us in a little bit during that speech. He said he was going to talk about the big things, the big things that America needs to do. And he then proceeded to talk about high-speed rail and high-speed Internet access and a million electric cars by a certain date. Well, my view is those are not the big things for America, that that is the candy of American politics, the goodies that you give out to people to make them feel better about who we are as a society. But there will be no need for a million electric cars on the road in 15 years if America continues to borrow 40 cents of every dollar that it spends. There will be no need for high-speed Internet access if we continue to have a Medicare and Medicaid program that runs at multiples of the rate of inflation 
with no end in sight. There will be no need for high-speed rail if Social Security, America's retirement plan, is not brought under fiscal control so that it can keep the promise that it's made to America's seniors. Yet no mention, no mention of that in the President's speech. And since that time, the President has decided to play politics with this issue, to lay back and not make his own proposal and criticize the proposals made by Republicans. Now, you can agree or disagree with the proposals that have been put forward by Congressman Paul Ryan, but at least he's in the arena making suggestions. And I love the cable TV show talking heads who say, wow, this is great. We have a master political strategist in the White House. He's understanding. Let them go first, and then he can pick it apart and criticize it and use it to his advantage to steam towards re-election in 2012. Well, I don't know about all of you, but for me, I'm not enamored with having a master political strategist in the White House. I'd rather have a leader in the White House. And if we're not going to lead on these issues of reforming entitlements, both at the state level and at the federal level, we are condemning our children to being the first American generation to not have a better life and a better lifestyle than the generation before them. Now those are the cold hard facts and those are the big things. And I know they're not convenient for the President's bumper sticker re-election, but they are the things that are going to determine what America's future is both at home and around the world. And so what we're doing in New Jersey is to try to set an example set an example for the rest of the country. Now, I know this is unusual for those of you who know about my state to think that New Jersey could actually set an example that the rest of the nation might want to follow. I mean, after all, we are the state that, for the last decade, has predominantly been known for just a few things. The Sopranos, the Real Housewives of New Jersey, and God forbid, Snooky, the situation, and the Jersey Shore. As to those last group of people, I want you to always remember, when you're here spending time in New York, that Snooky and the situation and Jay Wow and all those people from the Jersey Shore, not from New Jersey. They're New Yorkers. So when you're here in this suburb of New Jersey, enjoying your meeting today on the wrong side of the Hudson River, Remember, the Jersey Shore people are Andrew Cuomo's problem, not my problem. And I reminded the governor of this when we were together last week. I told him he could have Snooky, the situation, Jay Wow, and all the rest of them and have them back in Staten Island and in Poughkeepsie, where they come from, not in New Jersey. But New Jersey is setting the lead and setting the example around the country. And if you look at governors like Tom Corbett in Pennsylvania or Scott Walker in Wisconsin, Rick Snyder in Michigan or John Kasich in Ohio or Susanna Martinez in New Mexico. They are saying that they're following New Jersey's example and New Jersey's blueprint to bring fiscal sanity back to their states. Even my separated at birth twin brother, Andrew Cuomo. You notice the resemblance, don't you? Governor Cuomo and I are following startlingly similar fiscal paths. I said I would veto a millionaire's tax surcharge. Governor Cuomo rejected a millionaire's tax surcharge. I said I would balance the budget without new taxes. Governor Cuomo balanced the budget without new taxes. I said we should have a 2% cap on property taxes, and we achieved it. Governor Cuomo has proposed a 2% cap on property taxes and is attempting to achieve it in New York. I said we should cap the pay of school superintendents in New Jersey, which has gotten out of control. Governor Cuomo has proposed a cap on school superintendent salaries in New York. I tell you this not to try to imply that Governor Cuomo is copying what's happening in New Jersey. Heaven forbid New York would never do that. But what I am saying is that these problems and their common sense solutions are not red solutions 
or blue solutions. They are the black and white solutions of common sense.